gore and the splatter influence lyrics would soon be replaced by a much darker and sinister theme with the arrival of a young Swedish guy, Pelle Olin. A curse was laid upon the band as soon as he arrived. He called himself dead. Things were about to become very ugly for Mayhem and all involved the black metal scene. He sent me a tape with his band and a letter and a crucified mouse. I remember I had a pickup truck at the time and uh, we picked up the mail at our post office. And, uh, the mouse had started to disintegrate, so it was starting to smell a little bit. So I put the letter and the, the dead mouse in the back of the truck and uh, put the, the tape in, the, in my uh, car stereo. Of course the letter blew away, but luckily I read written down his address on the tape itself, so uh, kind of fun, funny story. And then, uh, we decided to, or he decided, he would come over and join us. That was, uh, I think it was about around Christmas time in 1988, 87-88. At this point, Mayhem had a permanent singer, but still they continued the search for a new drummer to complete the group. It was a friend of uh, Öystein <coughs> that had a demo tape from uh, Hellhammer when he was playing drums. And uh, then um, they hooked up and uh, Einstein drove Hellhammer out of my place and left him there, for, you know, so, so that we could talk. So, um, yeah, we ended up uh, taking all kind of the, all kind of drugs and everything that I had uh, <laughs> that evening. And of course, he was hired. And uh, I, uh, eight o'clock in the morning, he was out playing football with the kids in his uh, stockings. Uh, outside the, the block of flats I lived, and uh, you know I knew that he was the man for the job. So uh, very crazy guy. He is from the mountains uh, in Norway, a place called Trysil, kind of uh, in the middle of nowhere. Dead was living on welfare in Norway and was living in a house in Krokstad, a small village outside Oslo. Mayhem used this house as a rehearsal and as a meeting place. After some time, the other group members realized how odd Dead really was. Dead was uh, uh, a thinker, and uh, he was uh, quite quite as a person. Uh, a lot of uh, black humor in him. And, uh, he was also. Uh, he, had, uh, he was a great artist, actually, um, combined his uh, black humor with, uh, with drawings and came up with a lot of good drawings <clears throat> and also uh, wrote very good lyrics, I think, very deep lyrics because it was lyrics that he, it was personal for him and, um, well, you know, tracks like Life Eternal, and uh, freezing moon, you know, when he dies and fall after the freezing moon. And uh, you know, he was suicidal already from uh, childhood <clears throat> when he had a near death experience after a uh, ice skating accident. He had tripped and fell on the ice while uh, ice skating, and uh, his uh, milk had sprung open was rushed to the hospital and he was dead at arrival but they kind of got him back to life and then he remembered the tunnel and was very fascinated about this and he was only 10 years old at that time so after that uh, it was uh, you know that the, the, his path was kind of that was his path made and um, I'm not sure I knew Pella the other Pella Dead Pella we knew very well, and I guess the whole world, uh, which are interested in Mayhem or in black metal in general, they know uh, the image of, of Dead in Mayhem and his lyrics and, and what he stood for. 
but uh, the private peddler was a strange guy. The first time I met him, I was I, I got angry because I'm a kind of light-minded. I, I I'm I'm enjoying life. He did not, <laughs> really did not. He was kind of depressed. I do think that the real peddler was a great part of dead, the figure dead. I do think that, but not in the extreme way, but. Uh, but he, that's, that was something he, he just dressed up and, and became, but he was also that on a regular daily basis. He slept with dead birds under his bed because he wanted to smell death. And uh, it was an image, yeah, he was depressed, he was looking for death. He, he was different in all ways. I was fascinated by his stories about, uh, uh, he had some visions about uh, an afterlife and uh, uh, I think most of his lyrics are also based on those visions. Like for instance cats, he was not fond of cats at all and he, he hated cats so if a cat came to the Mayhem house at that time, he had a spear outside and he wanted to just uh, kill it as soon as possible. So he went out straight from his bed and tried to hunt it down and kill it, but I never think he succeeded in it. <laughs> and it, it was this other um, dark personality with him. Um, he thought he didn't belong in this world, like he uh, was meant to be another place. Um, uh, maybe another dimension, maybe another world, I do not know. But um, uh, so the dark sides of him, uh, it's uh, dif different things. With this new lineup, the band took a new direction. This to ultimate the black metal concept. Mayhem recorded two studio tracks Carnage and Freezing Moon. Dead started to write all the lyrics from their upcoming album, The Mysterious Dom Satanas. The band played their first show in five years. The new vocalist appeared on stage smeared in black and white face paint and shredded rotten clothes like he had just crawled out of a grave. He liked the skinny look. He, uh, it was a part of the, the, the whole uh, thing, uh, the concept, the dead concept. You know, a dead person should be pretty skinny, you know, and uh, with his corpse paint, which wasn't a corpse paint that he did to look cool like Kiss or look evil like King Diamond, it was more like to look dead. You know, it would draw snore down his, uh, from his mouth and uh, stuff like that. And uh, also another thing that he did was he used to usually bury <coughs> his uh, stage clothes and let them uh, lay in the ground for a couple of days to get that rotten soil, you know, to get the, the, the process of the, the rotting process into the fabrics that he had on stage while performing. Also, uh, dead animals was a big thing for him. Uh, he used to collect dead animals that he found, you know, like dead squirrels, dead the birds and stuff like that. They kept them, and uh, in front of some concerts and stuff, he brought these dead animals in a plastic bag and inhaled, as he said, the dead stench before going on stage to have the right feeling of death, the smell of death too. You know, so uh, he tried to, you know, to keep his 
concept, uh, you know. To be as quiet as he was uh, private. Uh, when he was on stage, he acted out his role totally, and um, and uh, he was a great uh, performer. Yes. Pretty wild, uh, but only in uh, in the sense that. He lived himself into his lyrics, and uh, when you sing about death and torture and stuff like that, uh, well, you can imagine that uh, the, what you look like on stage. <laughs>